Mrs. Higgins, will you do a roll call, please? I sure will. President Percival. Here. Vice President Bull. Uh, Councilman Capabiano. Here. Councilman Long. Here. Councilman Sidlow. Here. Councilwoman Guy. Here. Mr. Powers is not here. Uh, Councilman Swagger. Here. Mr. Wills is not here. And the engineers, Chief Mary. Here. Okay, Mr. Brissetti is not here. Okay, you do have a quorum. I'm here. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's spirit. <laughs> Mayor Dietman. Here in body, if not in spirit. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. It's all right. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please mute your cell phones? And if anyone is taping this meeting, would you please let us know? Anybody taping the meeting? Also, um, COVID restrictions have been list lifted with masks. If you feel more comfortable wearing one, please do so. This is a special council meeting in which the topic specific is concerning the American Rescue Relief Plan funds. I would ask everybody's patience as I'm going to be long-winded tonight. The public will have an opportunity to speak for three minutes per person after council has discussed various projects that they would like to see afforded with these funds. Each council member will have 10 minutes to discuss their projects and other members will have the opportunity to discuss or question that council member. For those who have not heard me speak about this subject at last meeting and the proposed projects at the previous meetings, I'd like to give everybody a brief synopsis as to what the American Rescue Relief Plan is. As I have stated previously, we were notified that this money was available and we had a short window of five days to apply for it. Through the efforts of many, we made the deadline for these funds. Fortunately, our application was approved and this year we received $121,939.63. I'm not sure where they got the 63 cents. There are numerous areas in which these funds can be used for. Several usages are for public health emergencies and a range of COVID-19 mitigation, support, education, and much more within the basis being responded to public health issues. The funds may be also used for economic development. Government services can be included, but not limited to maintenance of infrastructure, building new infrastructure, modernization of cybersecurity, which would include hardware, software, and provisions for our police department. There are also specific rules governing job training in conjunction with the Commonwealth, health programs, educational programs, public safety programs, and much more. We may use these funds to directly support provisions of services to our citizens. Funds may be used for economic development for businesses in which have experienced hard times and projects that will benefit the public through these businesses or nonprofit profit entity. The interim final rule gives recipients a broad latitude to use these funds for provisions for government services to the extent of reduction of revenue. Moving on, what we cannot use these money for. These monies are not intended to reduce the liability incurred in the general fund, payroll contributions, predetermination percentages of employees' wages or salaries, standards outside the realms of the rules of obtaining these funds, which are many. Also not permitted is hiring new personnel, funds to individual persons or households unless they can support through thorough and complete documentation for the determination as to how the pandemic specifically impacted the household or the person. To create a rainy day fund, a reserve account, pay down debts or interest on debts, match funds for grants, funding for other governmental projects through state or federal government, non-pandemic consultations for other projects, and many other non-eligible projects that are relevant to these funds. <clears throat> we are subject to the requirements and guidelines for the eligibility of these projects which are contained in the interim final rule, which are many and specific in nature. I am sure that Council 
nor the public would like me to go through each and every one of the rules of what can and cannot be used. Our first report is due for these funds with a complete explanation by August 31st in each quarter thereafter. Moving on, I will start with the projects which have been previously discussed at the last council meeting by myself or have been brought up to my attention through various department chairpersons or the police chief. I will remind council that the Commonwealth's bid thresholds are still in existence, such as any project $11,500 or under is exempt, $11,500 to $21,300, we need three quotes. Anything over $21,300 is a big factor. There are exceptions in which situations may be declared to be an emergency issue. We also have many proven vendors that we can utilize for various projects. These projects are necessities in which the borough budget could not afford to be started without a tax increase to our residents. I will try to give estimates where it is appropriate and suggest specific council members spearhead specific projects, giving reports to council meeting at council meetings as to the project progression of each project, making sure that we continually communicate with our treasurer concerning funding. My first project that I would recommend out of all the projects that we have discussed in the last two meetings is the air conditioning unit in the police department, which is from 2005. The heating system is from 1990s. Both have been repaired numerous times to the point where there is no sense in spending any more tax dollars on an old, inefficient unit that continually breaks down, leaving our police officers who are in full equipment either to bear the heat or the cold. A new unit or units would be energy efficient. A professional HVAC company, Paradam, which was recommended by our engineer, has come in to assess the unit, the insulation issues in the attic, and the necessities for attic fans, and a discussion with our current HVAC contractor. I personally feel that this should be our number one project. I don't have an estimate at this time for the total cost, but I can only think that we are looking at twenty dollars to $25,000 for the entire project. I would personally recommend that we leave this project in the competent and efficient hands of our engineer. Secondly, I would like to thank our highway foreman, Ryan, and Councilman Capabianco for looking into purchasing a new dump truck bed. As many of you know, we use this truck for all seasonal work, and the bed itself is rusting out to the point wood planks are being used to cover the rust. The truck itself is in good shape with reasonably low mileage. This item was deleted from the budget for the last two years to avoid a higher tax increase. An estimate would be approximately ten to 15000 I suggest Councilman Capabianco spearhead this, spear this replacement. My third project would be the woodlot improvements. This would include, but not limited to, removal of invasive trees, dead trees, poison ivy, and planting new vegetation. I also feel security cameras placed in a high, high enough to avoid vandalism should be considered. In the last two weeks, we've had numerous issues with vandalism in the form of graffiti and damage to our new park benches. And unfortunately, I have photos from the last batch of uh, vandalism. As many know, this has happened before. This is not the first time. I also feel it is for the safety of those persons using our park, especially in the evening hours. Please keep in mind, we are close to a city whose crime rate is different than our crime rate. And this could be a deterrent for any future vandalism or any injuries for those that may enjoy our public facilities. Lights are a deterrent, and to increase the number of lights down there may also be an option for the safety of others. As previously stated, we have found others using the area with dirt bike riding, leaving various trash behind. I can only estimate that this project would be approximately twenty to $25,000, dollars, and I would like to volunteer Councilman Long to review and approve and implement this project. 
Speaking of lights, I suggest we upgrade the lighting in our building to energy saving lights. A study, as I have mentioned numerous times before, has been performed on this entire building less than two years ago, free of charge, by ESG Company, a certified HVAC and energy efficient company who was recommended by our engineer. All recommendations were reformed to ensure that this building was energy efficient in numerous ways. Moving forward with energy efficiency is important. My only hesitation has been that we still have light bulbs which were paid for by tax dollars and it would be wasteful to dispose of them. I have suggested last month that we look into several streets as a test program for our LED street lights that may be changed over for a test program. I have to thank Councilman Long who took the opportunity to review several streets on the east side of the borough and has suggested we look into replacing the current street lights with LEDs on East Elbon, Burden Road, Blossom Avenue, and East Shelton. I can only approximate the number of lights and the cost for these two projects to be approximately $8,000. We have a proven vendor who can assist us with this project through Lenai Electric, and I'm sure Mr. Sidlow would be happy to spearhead this issue. Moving forward, Mr. Powers has requested $5,000 to be allotted for the Board of Health Services, Education, Mitigation, and Issues Dealing with the Pandemic and Public Services. Chief Murray and Mayor Dietman have requested approximately $10,000 to be allotted for the Police Department. As everyone is aware, our Police Department is in the process of becoming an accredited agency in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and we should be the first in the county to do so. There are numerous issues that need to be resolved or modified to the police facility to meet the accreditation standards. This would include, but not limited to, our camera system, retrofitting the holding cell, upgrading our access system to provide controlled access. Chief Murray is here this evening and can address these issues and answer questions as we proceed through the evening. Lastly, as Council was made aware, we have a possible sinking inlet line on Edgemont Avenue between Forest View Road and West Albarn. We have and are continually investigating this issue. This may be a major expense to the borough. We know that the utility companies have and are still hammering their lines, but they feel and we feel that it is probably going to be our responsibility to repair this line. It is an affordable expense for infrastructure repairs and I strongly suggest that we do these repairs out of this money. At this time a cost factor is unknown. We will have another utility coming, company coming in this week to do cameras. I am awaiting more information from our engineer. Projecting and estimating the approximate cost for all these projects, including the Edgemont Avenue Inlet. I believe we will use all of this year's funding on various projects. The projected estimates may be high, but we have no idea what issues or problems we may encounter. Hopefully there are funds left over to carry forward. I don't know. Looking into the future, I would like to see a recreational child's lunch program started for the summer months the progression or addition of improved street lights throughout the borough, infrastructure repairs, public recreation areas improved, improved police equipment, and numerous other non-tax dollar programs for our community. At this point, I am now open for any questions from my peers and the mayor concerning those topics that I have just mentioned. After we all, through the council and the mayor, have an opportunity to voice their concerns and their wishes. We will then ask count the mem members of the public if they would like to address council over these issues or other projects. So I am at this point finished and open for any questions or concerns with the projects that I've mentioned. Madam President, if I could, um, I'd like 
Chief Murray to expand on some of the needs for the police department, if you sure. could. Yeah. Uh, one of the things is, uh, this is personal uh, mention was we we're going through a process of accreditation. Uh, and in order to do that, there's some security issues that we need to address. Uh, there are some issues for convenience and prisoner handling that we need to address. Uh, so, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is we have a camera system that's already in the police department. I believe it's a 16 channel camera system. We only have about eight cameras presently. So this wouldn't be a huge expense to add some additional cameras to that current system. Um, I don't know what the cost of a camera is today, probably five or six hundred dollars, give or take, uh, uh, you know, a guess on my part. Uh, but uh, we will reach out and, you know, talk to some people and find out what the cost would be. And hopefully it's something that can be added to rather than replacing the entire system. The system works fine. Uh, but we need it for uh, more coverage in the outside of the cell area, more coverage uh, in the evidence handling, uh, as an accredited agency, evidence becomes a very, very critical piece of being accredited so that every piece of evidence that the police department handles is handled 100% properly. That people that don't have access or shouldn't have access don't have access, it's very controlled which leads me to point number two, and that is access within the building. Uh, I've only been here for a year and a half. Uh, I know that there are various people that have access to the police station, including all of the officers. Um, and one of the things that we really don't know is how many other keys may be out there. We've had employees leave us before I started. Hopefully we got all those keys back. Uh, but it would be much easier and much more secure if we had a controlled access system where if I leave, somebody that's in charge of that goes in and deletes me and I may have a fob such as this to get in, but it's no longer active. So I don't have any access. <coughs> if we change access for somebody, uh, we have an evidence control person. We change that person. I can immediately take and remove one and put somebody else in there. And it's not a matter of swapping keys. It's just an electronic uh, system where I can go in uh, and, and do that. Um, we have reached out to several vendors to give us some kind of an idea of what that would cost. Uh, and the last thing that we're asking for, uh, again, relates to prisoner handling. Um, when we bring a prisoner into the station, the less times we have to interact with that prisoner, the better. The less movement that we have with that prisoner is better, not only for the prisoner, but for us and the public in general. Uh, if a prisoner right now in the cell says, I need to go to bed, we need to take him out of the cell, we need to march him through the squad room, and we need to put him in a room with a toilet and a sink, okay? It's not a secure room, all right? Uh, and again, every time you move a prisoner, there's the possibility of something going wrong. Prisoner starts to put up a fight. Well, as everybody here knows, there's only one of us on duty all the time. <clears throat> So if something happens, now I've got my one police officer wrestling around in the patrol room with somebody that's out of the cell. So what we'd like to do is put in the cell, and there's sufficient room to do it, a, it's basically a prison toilet sink combination. It's stainless steel, um, it's a, you know, a self-contained unit, one piece, it's about that wide and stands about that high, and it's toilet and sink all in one. Uh, what we would need is the plumbing uh, that's associated with it. That's, that's all that it would take. The unit itself is about $2,100. Uh, the plumbing, obviously, I don't have a number on, but I have reached out to our plumbing inspector, 
he'll come in next week and meet with me and, and just go over and, and see what it looks like. Uh, I do know that we have access underneath of this building, so I would think that it's not a very complicated job. I'm not a plumber. <coughs> I don't believe that to them. So that's, that's the three items that we'd like to see from the police side uh, that would help us to move forward. Eventually, we're going to have to do some of those things one way or another. So if funds are available, this would be a perfect opportunity. Thank you. Thanks, Bert. Thank you, Chief. Um, Vice President, we started um, the meeting with explaining what is allowable and what is not allowable with the funding. Uh, the, I'm not sure where you came in. The first subject would have been the air conditioning heating unit. I've been staying abreast of it. I apologize. We're okay. The second would be like uh, inside, but, uh. the trip bed. We figured you got lost with all the trees down. <laughs> I didn't get lost. I was coming here. It just took me a couple extra minutes. But uh, okay. no, I've been keeping a bridge of all the emails and things like that, the truck Super. beds um, and everything else. Would you like uh, you got to? Any emails about the truck bed this week? This week? I've known about the truck bed for about two years now. We've postponed the truck bed for two years. Um, Vice President, would you like to start with any topics that we may have missed, any ideas that we may have missed? Do you want me to go through these? No, I, but I, I still, in, in the great green scheme of things, we shouldn't look at this like it's Christmas funds. Exactly. The, the, I mean, the cost of fuel's gone up 40% in the last six months. There's going to be a lot of things that are going to become much more expensive over the next little time, a little bit of time. Now, obviously, these are earmarked, allocated to keep the wheels on the bus spinning along, but I do think it should come with, uh, vetted well. Thank you. Mr. Sidlow, I will give you your 10 minutes, and I see you have also a handout if you'd like to go through. Do you have any questions on the proposals that I stated? Um, I have both. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So um, I've been talking about energy efficiency in this community for some period of time. I'm glad to see that President Percival has begun to take a little bit of a look sure. at. Do you feel the need to stand up? I'm sorry. I'm standing up. I have 10 minutes to speak. I'm going to stand Are up. Are you okay standing then? I guess so. Or you wouldn't have. I'm sorry. I can't interrupt you. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. So um, I'm glad to see that President Percival has uh, finally uh, begun to discuss energy efficiency projects um, at tonight's meeting. This is, a, this is the first. Everything I've proposed so far has been uh, um, spoken down. So um, I have a different plan for spending um, energy efficiency dollars. Um, so um, the lighting in this, in this borough building definitely needs to be replaced. And uh, PICO has uh, a program to replace, energy, to replace lighting. Um, they give a significant rebate if you use their vendor, which is uh, Concentra Business Solutions. We've had them come through and give us two proposals. They gave a proposal for every light bulb in the building, and they gave us a proposal for uh, just the most commonly used lights, like these lights right here in this room, only get used once a month, so it's a less energy efficient uh, choice to uh, replace these light bulbs. This borough building in general is an inefficient building. Um, the uh, crawl space is a vented crawl space, but it has insulation on the crawl space walls. So that means the air goes through the windows that are crawl space vents and goes right into the crawl space. And then there's no insulation on the floor below the crawl space, okay? Um, the building was built, was rebuilt 15 years ago in 2015. So the mechanical equipment should be reaching uh, the end of its life. But um, I think that we should take a thorough look at all of the mechanical equipment and all of the, um, and all of the lighting and do an energy audit on this building, okay. Um, the uh, I also think we should figure out 
can we put solar on this building? This roof over here on this side of the building is south facing and has great opportunities for solar. Okay. If we change from gas furnaces to uh, heat pumps, we can have an all electric building. We could, in theory, have no energy bill if we were to make good investments into, uh, into the building. Now, I'm not suggesting those investments today of mechanical equipment or of, um, I'm just saying we do, a, we do an energy audit of the building, and if we don't do an energy audit, then we replace the light bulbs. I do suggest we use the, a different vendor than Mrs. Percival suggested, because they will not be able to provide us with the rebates that the PICO vendor uh, can provide, okay? Um, you know, so in terms of the building shell, this ceiling right here, this is not an air barrier. A, a drop ceiling allows air to flow through, so hot air comes down into the, in, the, in the summer, and the hot air in the, in the building goes up through this ceiling in the wintertime. Um, it's not a proper air barrier. An energy audit would uncover that. I, I'm qualified to do the energy audit on this building, but I think it's important that a professional who's not me do the energy audit. Um, and then um, the, in terms of street lights, so we can purchase street lights ourselves, but the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission has been running for over 10 years now uh, a street light replacement program. So the program works this way. You call them up and you say, we want it. we're interested in the streetlight replacement program. They give us a free estimate for how much money can be saved if we replace every light fixture in the borough. We say, okay, we're interested in this. And then they say for $40 or $30 or $40 per light fixture, they do a uh, detailed survey of each fixture. They GPS locate it. They figure out how far it is between the pole to the left and the pole to the right and figure out what kind of spread is needed on the light fixture so that you get the most coverage, okay? And they significantly reduce the price because it's a bulk purchase. They are several, a bunch of municipalities will all join in this regional street light procurement program and every uh, vendor will get the same will get the same electrician or every every borough will get the same elect electrician to do the work and then because there's a pre negotiated price it's set to go so um, and then I don't propose we use these dollars for that for those light fixtures for those for, for the replacement of lights I propose we use liquid fuels dollars next year uh, to instead of instead of paving the streets Okay, so um, I also, in a dream world, you know, a mon this money can go to uh, homeowners and building owners and business owners who have been affected by the pandemic. So um, PICO has a great suite of programs for business owners or for homeowners who have uh, energy audits performed. I pr propose we rebate $50 to every building owner who wants to have some kind of energy efficiency evaluation done by those contractors. And then for homeowners and business owners who move forward with improvements in improving lighting or improving uh, the uh, air sealing of their home, I'd like this to give us to give them $100 towards a larger investment they're going to make. It's a token to say that energy efficiency uh, is important in, in our community. Okay, so um, I also have, um, you know, uh, one of the things that the municipality can use money for is to provide broadband access, and um, I wish I could say this was my idea, but I, I think we should allocate some money to purchase a computer and a printer that we can have in this uh, building for any citizen of the public to use. And if they don't have broadband access in their home, they can come during business hours and use the, the room, use the office and uh, print stuff out. You know, they have to pay for, print, for paper and ink and such. We, we have a fee for that. And, um, but just to have, so have broadband access. So um, I think that would be a, a good first step to providing uh, some broadband access to, uh, to anybody. So use my... Uh, 
my estimated dollar figures are on the paper. Um, I can read those dollar estimates off, but I think everybody can see what they're, what I'm proposing. Um, so um, I don't think we should replace the attic, the air conditioner in the police department yet, okay? My sense is the reason that the police department is not getting cool is that the attic is insufficiently air sealed and insulated. That was the original part of the building before the addition was made. And my gut sense is that the uh, attic was not insulated. I have tried on two occasions in the last three weeks to access that attic myself. I've been told I am not authorized to uh, look in that attic and to take pictures and to analyze the building. I don't see why as a member of Borough Council I am not authorized to go into the attic of the, uh, of the building. Um, that seems ridiculous to me. And um, um, those, are my, uh, those are my overall suggestions. Again, look, I know I sound like a one-tune band, although I wouldn't be a one-tune band if these proposals were passing already. Um, but uh, I believe in energy efficiency, and I believe in taking a macro approach to it. Replacing out two or three streets is a good first step, but we're not going to get the right price of streetlights. We're not going to get the right price. And we're going to be, um, we're not going to be sad. The, some residents are going to be happier than others with their new streetlights. So I think that's an inequ inequitable way to do it. And um, the dump truck bed seems reasonable. Oh, the wood lot improvements. So I am absolutely 100% against the installation of security cameras in a public park. Okay? Um, I think that the lights being on all the time is what invites the vandalism. I think we should have less hours that those lights are on. It's my understanding that, um, you know, the uh, lights were accessed through screws that were not tamper-proof screws. And if we had tamper-proof screws, then the destruction to the lighting may not have happened. I think that's a callback to the contractor. Um, but it is not appropriate for this government to track the movements of our citizens when they're in a public park. We should not be cameraing uh, a public park. Thank you, Mr. Sidler. Uh, would every, anyone like to, Mayor? Yes, thank you. Would you like to address uh, Mr. Sidlow's Mr. comments? Mr. Sidlow, uh, have some questions here on your proposal. Sure. First of all, let me make a comment. Um, I, too, am a civil libertarian. As you probably know, I believe that there is too much government involved in people's lives. However, um, in most major cities across this country now, the municipalities have, have provided cameras on various street corners. Uh, the police departments use them for speed, speed enforcement. So a camera on a street uh, corner is basically there for the public safety, not to intrude upon the well-being or the privacy of a citizen. So I think that's a factor that we have to take into consideration on that. Your total amount of money here is $40,738. No, it's not. I just added stuff. No, out. it's, 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 uh, it's $1,650. OK. Uh, must have been something in the computer. On four and five, which cover your allocation, have you done any research to see if the borough is allowed under law to out to rebate back? And the reason I ask you this question is about before this building was built, we had a fairly large surplus of money in the uh, general account. So at that time, Vice President Percival and I got together and um, brought a plan up that we would, re we would rebate taxes to the general public, the citizens for the Parkside, each household will get some tax money back. Investigating that, we found that we're not allowed to do that because we can only do what the Commonwealth's Borough Code tells us we can do. It tells us we can collect all kinds of taxes, but we can't give anything back. And my question would be this, are four and five with your rebate of federal monies going to be in violation 
of the Commonwealth law that boroughs and I guess townships cannot provide any type of rebates out of monies that they get from taxes or grants or federal other federal money. Well, uh, I am. I interpreted this from the. I understand what your interpretation from, is. From the, so what I ask you, I ask you, did you research the fact? No. So I'm. I don't feel like I'm giving. I feel like this is a direct payment to homeowners who've been affected by the pandemic. And I understand that, but the point is this: if you're not allowed to do it, and if it's on the prohibited list, then there's no way we're allowed to do it, regardless of whether we think it's a good idea or not. And you're talking here about, what, $7,500? And before we, the council, were to approve this, I think they need to be aware of whether we can, in fact, do it or not. Because it's going to make us look like pretty foolish if we say to all the people in town, we're going to give you back uh, $150, and then we turn around and say, I'm sorry, we can't do this. We didn't know we can't. The other issue that I have with these two uh, points is, what is going to be the benchmark for the homeowner to get these assessments done? And number two, who is going to be enforcing the fact that they did get the assessments done? They're going to have to prove to somebody. Right. Well. My vision was they would submit a receipt to the borough with fill out a simple form, and then the next time we cut checks. Mm -hmm. Well, how would you then, if I'm a homeowner and I give you submit a receipt mm. that I had the assessment, mm. how would you know that I'm actually being truthful about it? I'm not saying that our homeowners are dishonest, but there has to be some. Uh, in, in one of a better word, if we're going to be giving back funds, which we don't know whether we're allowed to or not, don't we have to be able to have a system that will police those rebates better than just me handing you a receipt and saying that Joe Smith said that uh, you're just the councilman sit low and won't get worse than my $150? Well, I mean, if a homeowner were to have a receipt from the PICO program that says we purchase an energy audit and they were to submit that receipt okay yeah it's possible that the homeowner did not have that audit done and they just didn't show up on the same day that it was scheduled but um, I think it's reasonable to assume that Can I that would actually occur that? let me interject on that I've got some of the majority of the rules and regulations um, assistant to households includes food assistance, rent, mortgage, utility assistance, legal aid to prevent eviction or homelessness, okay? Cash assistance for emergency assistance for burials, internet access, digital assistance, job training. When you go into the weatherization issues, and I think I said that at the beginning here of what was allowable and what was not. There are specific guidelines in which we must have documentation that supports as to determine how the pandemic specifically impacted the household or person to coordinate within their regulations. So if they're being evicted because they lost their job, then that is a specific um, item that we can help with. We, we don't, I'm not sure we can help by saying, here's a check. I would also assume that you would want documentation as to uh, last year's taxes to show that they were unemployed. Or the, are they willing to give that? Are they willing to give an assessment letter as to um, eviction, homelessness, emergency burial expenses due to COVID illness and death. Um, those are things that uh, I agree with the mayor. I think that at that point, we're getting into a fine line as to what the legalities are. Uh, 2.5 in the, what's called interim final rules will tell you that uh, 
we can assist households, but it's limited. Okay, there's a limit. Food assistance, again, food assistance, rent, mortgage, utility assessment, uh, legal aid to prevent eviction or homelessness, emergency cash for emergency burials due to COVID. Um, so yeah, I think that, that we're walking a fine line with that one. I'm sorry, Mayor, I just That's wanted right, to, I'm going. I'm going. to Thank you. point that out. President Purcell? Yes. yes. Um, I guess I'm curious how, I don't have any objection to getting the dump truck bed. I just don't see how that fits under the spirit of the stimulus payments. As far as I know, if I understand, and I, I read through the facts, which was like 40 some pages, um, the spirit of this is to help those who were most affected by the pandemic, people who were economically damaged because of the pandemic. The 121,000 divided by 2,400 residents, it comes out to about $50 a resident, just to give some perspective. So if there's 10% of our families who have suffered because of the pandemic, who lost their jobs, waitresses who couldn't go to work because the mm -hmm. restaurants were shut down, I, I, I would like to see the money myself go toward people who actually were harmed but by that's the not, pandemic. That's not what Mr. Sidlow is proposing. I'm not was. talking about Mr. Sidlow's proposal. I'm talking about then my own. How would you, would you prepare an application and yes. get it out to every homeowner, ask them for a copy of last year's taxes, yes. A pandemic, uh, what did they call it? A thorough and complete documentation for the determination as to how the pandemic specifically impacted the household. Yes. And follow the guidelines, which I just read on, I should have closed it. Um, food assistance, rent, mortgage, utilities, it Sounds like cash. For, you know, it's cash. Yes. Food assistance, rent. Food assistance. It's cash. Okay. Thank you. Uh, does anybody else have any questions for Mr. Sidlow? I think we got sidetracked. Yes. <clears throat> you recommended some of the companies that you recommended. Are they approved by the, is it Delaware County? We have to go, we have to follow through certain contracts, vendors. We have proven approved. vendors. Approved vendors. Mm -hmm. Are they, like Concentra, are they approved for us to use those? Well, uh, uh, because I believe the guideline says that we have to put out bids and with approved vendors. We can use approved vendors if it's under a specific amount of money. Right, which was 11,000? 11, 11,5, 11, 11, 5, Anything over, we needed three quotes. Three quotes. 21,000, that's a whole different 21, three. So uh, I, mean, I am not proposing <coughs> any budget, any, any purchase of $11,500 or more. Or, or more. Okay. Am I correct, Mr. Sidlow, in looking at this closer, none of your suggestions actually do anything except request audits? Uh, it begins the process I understand that. of making more Would it not more be substantial better to be able later? to take some of that funding and put it directly into programs that can, we can get some benefit out immediately? instead of spending money to have somebody come in here and say we need this to happen that to happen we, we do have i believe i may be incorrect with this but there is a second is there not a second wave of this coming yes next, next july okay i hope so you know if if an audit is fine but you would expect the auditor to agree with your point sure so if we had ten thousand dollars left over on this to, to provide better better quarters for the police department, that would be a benefit that happens immediately. Spending all this money on audits could carry over into 2022, and we would not see the borough would not see any benefit from this until you get uh, get the thing in process. If I am willing to skip steps and not do the energy audit and begin with insulating and air sealing the attic. And uh, sure, if you want to skip steps and, and uh, 
That so we just move, a, just move. That in. would be a cancelmatic decision, not just my decision. Move it, just move into improving the building. I'm okay with that. Well, then, don't you think the monies that we would improve the building would? Wouldn't you rather see that go to the residents? We could up the up the ante for the residents who feel that they were affected by the pandemic. Um, I'm just saying. Okay, I mean, okay. if you're putting five or ten thousand dollars into um, resources to just check out the building to see if it's okay we should do it then why don't we put that money towards what mrs guy i'm sorry am i interrupting you no okay um mrs guy recommended that we give out to all the residents i mean give them another 10 throw them a, throw them a bone give them another 10 bucks um i'm willing to uh entertain mrs guy's proposal as well okay mr sidlow i would like to ask um we have already and i have mentioned this numerous times in the last 18 months have had a free of charge assessment of this building by a company named ESG which is certified HVAC company which I just mentioned today in my report okay they're not an they, HVAC, they're not an HVAC company they are a they are an air sealing insulation company an energy efficiency company right they, and, they do their own air sealing and insulation installations they uh, recommend HVAC contractors thank you and we've already had this done so Okay, so let me finish, yeah. please. I don't understand why we would spend this money to do another energy audit of this building if indeed we had one that was free 18 months ago okay. or two years ago. So do we have That's, a cop do we have a copy of that? Because I've been asking for that for since I got on council. And I suggested to you every time you ask, you check with our engineer who has a complete file since she was the one that designed and built this building in 2005 she has the records i have suggested that every time you ask me for a copy and i say i don't have a copy check with our engineer okay that's my first point uh, the second point is i am surprised that anybody would want less lighting in a public facility area recreation area in which we all know have had lights vandalized benches vandalized, graffiti with obscenities. I, I don't understand the need to have less lights in the woodlot versus more lights. Um, are you look, saying I've, I've never, that I've never lights, been I've never been to the woodlot at night. I don't know how bright or dark it is. Well, are you but, saying that the lights are encouraging people to vandalize down there? Because they can see what they're doing? It would seem to me that if the lights are on all night long, it provides a good opportunity for people. For it, 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 it's like a beacon for people to come and go, oh, what's going on where those lights are? Let's go hang out over there. Whereas if it's dark, then they may not be as interested in hanging okay, out at night. Can I add one to that? So then if you're saying the lights create the vandalism or could... I don't, I don't know that they're... Then, I, then does that mean we shut off all the street lights? I like to see all the street lights shut off after midnight through Parkside because... That's the same thing. Lighting has always been said that deters vandalism, criminal activity. So you're saying if we turn off the lights in the park, that's going to deter the vandalism. So that means we can just turn off all the street lights in Parkside, save the money on getting new lights, because we don't need the lights now. Put that towards the residents of Parkside, throw them another bone, then we don't have any more vandalism. Okay, so... Um... I mean, I'm just asking, is that... To me, that's your it, it seems equation. like it seems like the streetlight security work because people are around to see. Oh, I was that to see others. Part of your, what you think? Uh, look, I, I, I live behind I, the park. I am not a police expert. I don't, I don't know why vandalism can, occurs can or when vandalism occurs or, or anything about what has occurred. It just seems to me that those lights being on all night long gives people a reason to come to that park in the night with idle free time. With idle free time. Madam President, excuse me a can, minute. Can we we have, Thank you. Yeah, we gonna... have the chief of police here. Uh, would you like to address, do we need more lights so people see how to vandalize what they're doing or less lights so they can see what they are doing? Um, before he answers, I'm going to kind of put you on the spot for a second thing here. Um, but going to the one topic that was brought up about the woodlot with the idea of cameras. Mm -hmm. If you could, your professional opinion as far as the lighting with the camera situation as well. Well, I think that that's a two-pronged approach, which I like. Uh, when you provide security any place, uh, the area being lit 
is actually a benefit. Uh, it is a deterrent to people. Um, there's, you know, when you look at uh, securing your residence, one of the things they tell you is to not leave dark locations where people can hide. So if the park is dark all the time, we're during hours of darkness, uh, that is an invitation for people to be in there doing whatever they, they want to do. Uh, having lights would be a deterrent for people to be in there. Now, nothing is perfect. You know, understand, if somebody wants to go in there and vandalize, whether there's lights on or not, that's likely to happen, okay? Uh, but for somebody who looks at it and says, yeah, it, you know, I can go over here and, and do something where it's dark as opposed to here where it's light, I'm going over there. Add cameras to the equation, okay, and now we have a, a bigger deterrent so that you know, people know they're being caught on camera, they're less likely to do something. Uh, I don't know whether you saw the news tonight, uh, but Yaden just had a homicide. Yes. Uh, and they're using cameras to identify the individuals who are responsible. Kudos to them. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's just a, a great security piece to help us to protect the borough asset. Chief, over the past six or eight months, no fault of yours, by the way, we've had some interesting things going on in downtown Parkside. All right. How beneficial have the cameras been to providing information to the police department to help clear or arrest or end these cases? Uh, they've been enormously beneficial. Uh, and these aren't borough cameras, these are cameras that private individuals have on their place of business or their homes. Uh, and, and, you know, it's one of the first things, as a police department, it's one of the first things we look for when some crime has happened in an area is, who's got cameras, okay? And we go knock the door and say, you have a camera, does it work? Was it recording? Would you share what you have? They don't have to. They can tell us to go pound sand and, and we go on our way. But most people are willing to share in the interest of security. Uh, as to the, you know, the, the mayor's point, uh, we've had cameras that have been very, very beneficial in, in number one, clearing an individual who ended up in a gunfight on Edgemont Avenue. Uh, without the camera, it would have been a, a, a very, potentially a very different outcome. Uh, but the camera showed exactly what was going on. So yes, cameras are, are, are that proved to be a very, very enormous benefit. Uh, and, and they do act as a deterrent. You know, when people know that they're being recorded, they're likely to go someplace else to do whatever it is they want to do uh, outside the, the sight of a camera. Thank you, Can Chief. I also say our neighbor, I live on the woodlot, and when the lights were out, one of our neighbor's uh, property was vandalized. They didn't go to the police because they happen to know the person who tried to get into the, to the house. And basically it's because, as I said, all the lights were out from the edge of the woodlot all the way up. I believe we had some instances where if we take out the lights, if there's an incident going on in the park, how are the police officers supposed to know where to go to run in the park? How are they to see? Um, we, I called the police a couple weeks ago because of the motorbikes. Mm -hmm. And it was towards twilight, I think it was. Was it you, officer, that I talked to? So it wasn't that, I mean, with the lights out, they would have never been able to um, go out, catch them or go or find them. But I mean, I think the whole idea of no lights, that doesn't cause vandalism, that promotes it. I mean, it doesn't promote vandalism, that's just, I never heard that before. Uh, have, have you, have you, have you, has your office investigated the, the vandalism? What have you learned? We have, uh, we have discovered the vandalism, okay? And without anything further, there's there's nothing that is going to have us spend countless hours investigating. Okay. We don't have any information. We have a damaged bench or the damaged lights. Uh, cameras may be beneficial in, in pointing us in a direction, you know, identifying people that, that may have been there. Uh, 
even if that person wasn't necessarily responsible, if we knew, if we recognized the person, it would give us somebody to go to and talk to uh, and maybe get additional information. Did they see something going on? Is the vandalism occurring in places that are lit or not lit? Uh, well, I, I'm, I'll make an assumption here, okay? Because I don't know that the lighting is on all night. Is it? Yes. Okay. It's what on. time does it go off in the morning? I believe it goes off at five, five or five. Five thirty-six. Five thirty-six. It goes off. Is it is it on a timer or is it? Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Uh, so if the lighting was out for a period of time, which it was, right. then that's possibly when the vandalism took place. Uh, again, there's no there's no cut and dry. It's not not the fact that lighting was or wasn't there is going to deter everything. But having lights will be more of a deterrent than not having lights. Isn't it is true that, you. The, that the new generation of cameras see, but see things going vision. on without ambient lighting? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the quality of cameras today is, is phenomenal. Uh, I mean, if you go back 10 to 15 years ago, uh, you got a, a camera back then, it, you were lucky to make out a, a, a you know, the form of an individual, you were you probably never had enough detail unless you were willing to spend, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah, the camera's on our house. Uh, you can now, see the hair on a raccoon's butt. Yeah. yeah that's how clear it is. a camera, you know, that's <laughs> relatively inexpensive that has very, very high quality. Thank you, Chief. We're going to move on and, um, I'm sorry. Can I inter interject for just a moment? Please, for Councilman Sidlow's information or? No, it's my own. Okay. Um, uh, being down in the woodlot, we have utilized uh, residence cameras to investigate crimes. Not me, but I, I, I have heard of it as far as that goes. So I, I think something like that would be beneficial. Uh, it would be nice if it could be somewhat wireless or something and then show up. So, uh, And the other thing that I noticed is where there was a nice place for the officers to turn around before the uh, exercise area was put in. Mm -hmm. I think if we could, it would be nice to recreate that area okay. to uh, aid in patrolling uh, so they don't have to like jump the sidewalk, the curb, or whatever, make mm -hmm. it just a little bit more convenient. Uh, we can have Amazon take care of that for us. <laughs> <laughs> no, they actually ended up in a really strange they, place that, they did. that one time. Uh, right. for, for those that don't know, we had a problem with Amazon uh, last year. Yeah, last year Christmas. Using their uh, GPS at Christmas time and made a wrong turn, ended up in the middle of the woodlot, stuck. <laughs> stuck, literally. Thank you. I appreciate that. If it can be considered, considered that. We'll if put I a turnaround for the police. Talking about the woodlot. Woodlot now has a street address. It's yeah, it 99 does. Park Valley. Yep. Okay. That's good okay. because I've gone to 911. They're like, and, and we did that. Uh, actually, yes. Officer Stoffelbach was the one that that worked on it. Uh, but we we sent the information out to the county. Uh, they have put it in the CAD system uh, so that anybody that needs to report where they are, 99 Park Valley will get the police. To the Super. Thank That's you good. for doing that. Yeah, 911 always said, well, Thank police you. officers know where the woodlot is. I'm like, yeah, they would. Ah, moving on, uh, Councilman Schweiger, would you like to have a report this evening um, for projects of anything that we did not speak of already? No, I'm just kind of listening to the other projects that are being proposed at this time. Super. Councilman? I've been enlightened enough. I stole my right the boat. Councilman Long. Um, I just thought with the woodlot that yes, um, we had talked about. I tried to, um, I saw some of the pictures that we had of the woodlot years ago. Mm -hmm. And I completely forgot about how the woodlot looked. It was a mess and a lot of dog do. Well, other than that, it was very, it was nice. So <laughs> it was only a mess when we, Easter had to be done. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to maybe put, I had, um, Williamson School Trade has a horticulture program and see if they would be interested in making that a project for them. 
And if anybody has, I mean, basically it's the trees, the poison ivy, the cleanup, I mean, just getting things, making it look like it was before, so even planting new trees, mm -hmm. uh, flat, uh, plants that come back every year. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I, I meant to bring the pictures, they're in the closet somewhere. But they had, on the hill, they had flowers that were taken care of, um, yeah. plants. They had a lot of stuff that yeah. really just, it was, it was inviting. Right now, it's just, it's there. You're talking a good 20 years ago, if I remember. When Mrs. I first Higgins, I'm, the you might remember. It, yes, the problem with it not sustaining that was that we couldn't get water down there. Yeah. Oh, okay. To water the flowers and all that, that yeah. was an issue. Right, okay. I never and and the, the actual woodlot itself is it in tr transition to like more of an overmature area because when I first moved here, there was dense canopy, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so you didn't have the invasive vines, you didn't have anything like that because the trees kept it shaded. But many many trees have just gotten so old that they've failed, they've broke. Uh, so we're just kind of in like that downward loop where maintenance may be. Uh, well, we work with a lot of graduates from Williamson. I certainly can ask if that would ever be a, a consideration for them. Super. Uh, Councilman Long, do you have any other projects you'd like to add or, or discuss? Um, I can't remember. It was a woodlot and I can't remember. Okay. We can come back to you. Yeah. Mrs. Yeah. Guy, you've got 10 minutes if you'd like the whole 10 minutes. If not, did anyone else have 10 minutes or just me and Scott? Nobody, um, if you, I don't need to. I'm minutes. sorry, if you heard Councilman Schwager, Councilman Capabianco, uh, Vice President Bull all said that they passed their, their time frame. Okay. Um, I, I would like to learn more about the sinkhole and when we will know who is responsible for that. And I guess I'm curious to know why we would be responsible as opposed to those who are running the pipes. Because that honestly seems to me like, um, the most qualified according to what the um, frequently asked questions and the um, the stimulus itself says that seems to be the one that we could truly use it for because it is related to water and sewage um, but I, I would like to know more about it you know I understand that we're still learning but you know uh, I sent council a email several maybe two weeks ago uh, with the project uh, with the problem of the inlet. It's a storm inlet. We can trace it from where the first sinking area is at the end of West Elbon on Edgemont Avenue. It can be traced to in front of the school at West Forest View. I don't know if everybody remembers, PennDOT has patched that several times for us. It's sinking again, and the connecting pipe is sinking at uh, West Elbon. Uh, Chester Water came in. They cameraed the line, their water line. They said their water line is fine. Delcor is due to come in Thursday. I believe uh, Ms. Catania will contact your office. Or you, and we will have a police officer there tomorrow night. Super, thank you. Um, they're going to camera their lines, which are parallel to our inlet. The borough's storm inlets are the borough's responsibility. Uh, just as we had one on Upland Avenue at Tom Sweeney two years ago, uh, council members who were present then may remember that uh, if anybody has seen a storm inlet, once you take the grate off, normally you have a brick four-walled issue, and some of those bricks had caved in we were fortunate enough to have another entity replace it for us. This will not be the situation this time. It looks like the pipe from West Elbon under Edgemont Avenue at West Forest View that we have a cave in or a break somewhere between those two lines and it's undermining the roadway creating a sinkhole. And again, Thursday, uh, Delcor will be here. The last step is, yeah, it's probably ours. So not PennDOT either? Mm -hmm. PennDOT has been kind enough to come out. We contacted them first. PennDOT came out and said, nope, we will fill it for you until you find out what's undermining our roadway. 
we have called them uh, Nick three times. And everybody knows West Forest View has sunk since last year. They put a plate over it, they covered it, and every time the ground goes down because of the water coming through it is undermining the dirt, we call them, they've been kind enough to come back and put more blacktop over the inlet and over the pipe area. Thank you. Mm -hmm. can, you can you send that email again, please? Because I don't recall receiving it. Perry doesn't recall receiving it. No, I, I don't know if I did or didn't. I can't remember. Well, I have no way of knowing who receives it and who doesn't because sometimes no one responds. I will check to see if I have it with me tonight. If not, I will go through my file and send it again. I believe the topic was two problems. Uh, one was the storm inlet, and I forget if the second problem was the air conditioning unit. I believe it was the air conditioning unit. And I do remember it was the security cameras. Security cameras? Yes, and I talked to the uh, chief that um, I will contact and just Oh, get, on yours, okay. Yes, for the woodlot and for the um, police department. So okay. you can get a twofer. Super. Mrs. Guy, uh, did you have any new projects that we have not discussed? Um, no. Mm -hmm. But I do like the lunch for the kids in the summer. Yeah, I think it's a great project. And we can coordinate that. Uh, Delaware County has some programs along with some private entities that are very supportive for recreation and child's lunches. So that's a, that's a wonderful one to coordinate. Mayor, do you have anything other than what we've discussed? I do not, other than to say I would hope that uh, the council will consider uh, the police department's request. Uh, it is definitely tied in to funding for the, uh, the program that we are in to be accredited. And uh, one of the reasons that we got into this program was because uh, it looks like down the road, the money that is available through federal and state grants is going to go first to accredited departments. So anything that we can provide to get this accreditation going and passed, we're well on our way now. Uh, but anything that we can provide to get this accreditation going over the long run, not only will it, will it help the police department now, but down the road it will be beneficial when we need to go to the coffers again and try to get some money. So I would hope council would be uh, generous on their uh, decisions with this. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, at this time we have called the citizens. During a special council meeting, we are topic specific. If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions on the topic that we just discussed, um, you will have three minutes to address council. So if anybody would like to address council on the topic only of the American Rescue Relief Plan, please stand to the podium and address with your address and your name. Um, Michael Costigan, 254 West Roman. Um, I just want to say, I used to live that just about every day, and I think any effort to make it safer, to limit the vandalism would be, um, I would really appreciate that. That's what we to say. Thank um, you. Also, um, in, this, in the spirit of this Rescue Act, I think it would be wise to give some relief to um, a residents of the borough. Um, I've been talking to quite a few residents over the past several weeks, um, and I've heard from multiple who have said that they're having to move out of the barrel because of financial uh, hardships. So um, I think it would be uh, prudent to help the residents who need it um, so that they don't have to leave because uh, they're great residents and we shouldn't have to leave. So um, I would uh, thank Mrs. Guy for recommending. Uh, sir, are you aware of what I had stated about the requirements for that? The requirements? Yes. Yes, for, for, for um, cash. Either if it's uh, housing assistance or food assistance. Prevent or eviction or homelessness. Yeah. And there's got to be specific. And the act itself says that it must have thorough, complete documentation for the determination as to how the pandemic 
specifically affected that household or person. So we are under, as the mayor said, we are not allowed through government, state or federal, to give cash to homeowners or persons. Uh, we, with this act, there are specifics that we would require to be gave, given to any person for cash, any person or household. Uh, another thing when we do give this cash to senior citizens, I mean, the cost of food has gone up, but they're on fixed incomes. Would they qualify? So there's a whole gambit of questions that would have to be answered and procedures and protocol that would have to be put in place. But I thank you for your suggestion. And I'm glad you used the wood line. I imagine we wouldn't have to reinvent the wheel. I'm sure there are forms out there that other entities use to try to figure out if somebody is qualified for the funds or not. I, I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, Mrs. Worth investigating. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I do not. I do not advocate doing just two streets. I advocate doing, um, having the study done by the Regional Planning Commission to determine what needs to be done for the entire borough. Um, I know we pay something like $350 a, a, a light fixture every time in LED. $432. $432 every time we replace a, 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 a metal halide light bulb with an LED light bulb. So, but that would be paying the full vendor rate. I don't know if we get a discount for doing 15 light bulbs or something like that, but uh, at the, the Regional Planning Commission program will give you a discount on the, on the, on the whole borough. When I talked to Len I Electric a couple weeks ago, when I happened to, when I found out the lights in the wood lot, I went, actually I went through Old Parkside because I wanted to, I actually wanted to see just what your lights would cost. And we have approximately 130 street lights in Parkside. That's on both the east side and the west side from East Avon all the way over to West Forestfield. And when I talked to Lenai, she did confirm that. She said it's roughly 135. Mm -hmm. And they charge would be $430, $432 per light bulb, which comes out to be about $54,000, $58,000 to do the whole Parkside, which Mr. Sidlow was within the when he gave a quote a while ago. That was the ballpark he had given. Um, she also recommended that we do not do it all at once because of the extreme cost. She said it's best most other boroughs are doing a couple streets at a time as they, as either as they need it. And she even said because the street lights we have now, they can't replace them. They're gone, they're old, they're, no, nobody has them. So that's why they're replacing with the, the LED. But she recommended that the cost would be astronomical and she said why put that on the cost of the the residents. And you can clarify that with, uh, I think her name is Danielle at Len, Lenny, Lenny. And she said, do a couple streets at a time or just do it as you are, as we're doing now, replace them as needed. She said, why put, why do it all at once? And she said, and this way you also get an idea, will the residents like these lights? Because some residents might not like them. We have residents who think the, the woodlot looks like I-95. And I went down and I checked on that. The light is 100 feet from her house. So I don't even understand where she came with it. It looked like I-95. But so she said this way you get an idea. Will the residents be pleased? Why do the whole park side, if with the council meeting, they're all going to come and say, we don't want these lights. They're, they're shining in our house. First, I would say just hang drapes or blinds. But it's, once again, lighting deters vandalism. So... And it doesn't have to be the east side. I mean, do the west side. I mean, I just think we need to start, try a trial. Like mm -hmm. uh, President Purcell had said, do a trial, see what it's like. And, and it's not a cost that we don't, people think that we don't want these. It's the cost factor. We don't want to incur the cost to the residents. And why take money away from road the, um, the road repair, for, um, for the, what's it called? That liquid the, fuel. Liquid fuels. And we can use that for something else. If we use all that money up for lighting, and right now, and each year we get less and less from fuels, from the fuel, the liquid, liquid fuel. fuels. 
um, we're not going to have any money for salt for the roads. So we're not going to be any better than Chester when it comes to when the snows. Has anybody driven through Chester when it snows just six inches? You can't get through. So yeah, Parkside has been very good about making sure they are out there plowing the streets. If, and if we... let me interject that uh, one of the problems, uh, when you take liquid fuel money, not only do they, does liquid fuel, and I've explained this numerous times over the last several years, liquid fuel money is a trickle down effect. And when we get our allotment, we use it to pay for the electricity to turn these lights on. Street we lights. pay for salt and we pay for road repairs. And whether some feel our roads need repaired, I would suggest you talk to people on West Elbon who uh, have been asking Nick to fill potholes. Uh, some of the people on Shelton who again ask for potholes to be filled. These are roads that need repair. So if you take that amount of money and you spend it on one project, then, which is, I want to say free money, liquid fuels is basically free money. Now you have to take the cost for the lights to turn the street lights on, the cost for road repairs, which are approximately 40 to $45,000 a year, if not more, and the cost of salt for the roads, uh, cost of anything to do with the road, including inlet repair. Now you deplete all the liquid fuel money for one project, and the budget must sustain all the other projects. What does that equate to? A very large tax increase. Well, I, I so I disagree with that. So thank you, Mr. Sidlow. I, I mean, I'm not I'm not poo pooing your idea, Mr. Sidlow. I think it. I mean, I have to say, I, and I told President Percival, I went around Parkside and I looked at the lights. And yes, Parkside is very, needs more lights. It's very dark mm -hmm. with the lighting and all that. But why take the money from the fuel fund mm -hmm. when, when we have this money here where it says that we can use it as long and putting money into the infrastructure and into companies that need the money to put that, get them to survive more. So this is how we're using the money. It's not because we want to beautify Parkside. It's, we can put the money into the infrastructure of Parkside and also Economic help. development. Thank you, that's the word, economic development. So that, but let's start doing that. Why take, so we have this money that's coming to us. Why take money from another program that we can use it for the roads? So now we have, it's a win-win all around. We have the lights, we have the road repair, we have the salt, we have the inlet money. So right so, there, I mean, so why take all the money from one project and last year we got we got they took seven percent we got seven percent less, less than this year than last year and we know that they're going to give us less this year so you're looking at a good probably twelve fifteen thousand less this year than that next year than we got for this year so sooner or later you're not going to have any money you can't get money from the uh, blood from a turnip as they say so mrs it, uh, mrs roman do you have anything else to say i'm ma sorry i would like to comment on all right Mr. Sidlow, do you have a comment for Mrs. Roman on what she just asked? Will I consider two blocks? Nine thousand dollars. Nine thousand dollars. We're going to about eight to nine thousand. Uh, four blocks is better than nothing, but I would like to do it as a big picture. And also, the advantage of using liquid fuels and doing it one year and skipping a road program for one year is that there would immediately be a savings of roughly $10,000 in lighting bills. Every year Every year, with our current street lights, we pay about $16,000 in street lighting bills. If we were to change them all out, we might be down to $6,000. That $10,000 savings would then go into the road program every year moving forward. But we're also so based you're on not stating, stating that that $10,000 is a figure over a five year period. No, I truly true. don't want to get back into the argument no, there's no, there's, of who put the horse before the cart. If we, We've gone through this numerous times for the last 18 months. Do you have a response to Mrs. Roman? You just said, no, you don't want to help out with the two streets versus I, oh, the entire I, building. I didn't say that. Okay. I didn't, she didn't, that thought wasn't Mrs. Roman. So questions. you prefer to do the entire borough versus a, a test pattern? That's correct. Okay. 
Does anybody else from the audience wish to address council? And, and I also please. wish to get DVRPC to give us a projection of how much money we can save, which is free. If you could stand at the podium, give us your name. Can your uh, circulate photos. Sure. Okay. Thank you. As you talk, you can you can do that. <laughs> sure. I'm going to give you three minutes, but we'll, we'll add a few sure. for two people. Okay. Uh, my name is Joanne Allen, 13 Park Valley Lane, uh, Village of Green Tree. Um, I'm one of the board of directors for Park mm -hmm. Valley. Uh, that is the first of all talking to me. Uh, I wrote a letter to the board recently about uh, the... Now, let me ask you, is this specific to the American Relief Plan money? I know that some of the monies are earmarked for stormwater management. That's correct, but you're in a private development. Yes, but we can and you you will not qualify. You will not water for the township across our property. Um, so there is a, you know a, a stormwater management easement that we, the water that we are conveying does not come from our property. It comes from near the elementary school. There is a spring there mm -hmm. that, and we are crossing that water across our property through uh, a, a stormwater management easement that was built 50 years ago, and that easement is now failing. It's made of corrugated metal pipe, and there are sinkholes opening up in the development mm -hmm. as these pipes are starting to fail. Um, it, is a, it is an easement. You know, um, we you know, bear the, the responsibility and the burden of taking the water from the rest of the community and crossing it across our property, but yet we are, it's not our water, but yet we are left with the expense of taking care of an easement that is, should be uh, considered part of the uh, Parkside stormwater management system. Let so, me suggest this. Um, I think we're into the legal issue here, as you and I had spoke at quite length uh, not too long ago. And I think uh, between the engineer and our attorney, we would need the legalities of our involvement on that easement issue. Uh, you're talking private property. The monies are not permitted to be used for private property. But it's an easement. So easement well, that's what I'm saying. So how would we go about uh, handling the legality of it? I, I think uh, I, would, I would much rather deal with the council and not involve attorneys. You know, we you know we just want to talk like you know we're uh, just residents and you know just want to bring up to council and respectfully ask that we be considered for the grant money or some of the grant money that's going to be available. Um, it, some of the photos you can see there are pipes that come mm -hmm. from um, as they come from the neighboring properties and dump onto the village of Green Tree those pipes as well have failed and have fallen um, and are face down into the dirt. Um, so, you know, even where you're conveying water from to us it is, yeah, has failed. Um, and I would think that, you know, it's important that the borough know that we are taking on the water from around the school and that it should be considered that should this system fail, then places upstream will also have, have difficulty. It's, it's just a clarification in my mind. The water that you're talking about is coming from the school school property? It's coming from around the school area. There's a creek back there. There's a, there's a stream so there, it, and that's where the water is coming from. If that, that, if, that pro, if that water crosses into the school property and then goes directly into Green it's Street, a issue. Right, then it's a Pendelco school issue. I mean. I, I, and I'm sure that the president will agree with me on this. We have, we have worked with Pendelco on numerous things about this town, but it may be beneficial to both the borough and uh, Green Tree. Green Tree. How, how are you doing, Tim? I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> Green Tree to get the school district involved on this because you know it's like I know this is getting another entity into something creates problems. But it's, look, if it's your water, you have to take care of this. And we certainly would be able to use our good offices to try to convince the school district 
that that they're doing the right thing. We would greatly appreciate yeah. And I think that may be the way to go. So have you contacted the school at all? No. Is there a reason why not? Well, that the water drains on Edmond Avenue. Please, please. Well, I'm also uh, on the board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, they give me a chance. Uh, right. I'm just looking at the We had discussed this at uh, Sunday night and it was agreed that the school board would tell you that I lived down there um, when they were first built. I remember we talked about it. We talked about that and I watched them hand make those bridges, uh, the stone culvert area, um, my entertainment for the day I guess with small children. Uh, the problem when that was built was uh, I cannot say that we took responsibility for the easements. I cannot say that without our attorney and our engineer verifying that. And I don't want to say that um, and create a liability issue for this council. Uh, we do know that there is a pipe from the creek at the school that comes and goes down into your uh, waterway there under that small bridge and it continually flows because those apartments towards the back had flooded many years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, had flooded out and uh, that was uh, the flow of the water was rearranged at the time of that flood where how I don't remember my suggestion uh, initially would be to contact the uh, facility manager for the Pendelco School District and see if they can come up with the drawings from the new school which is not so new anymore I guess no. what 15 years old the other issue, the other question. And that I would be a start for you versus coming. Is the coming creek in Parkside? I'm sorry? Is the creek in Parkside or is it in Brookhaven? Uh, we had a DEP and EPA issue in which Brookhaven, it was Brookhaven. Actually, there's storm drains along Edgemont Avenue, right at Garrison, runs that. That's the first right. part right there. On Edgemont Avenue, at Garrison, by the school, that water goes right into where you were talking about. And that's part of the state. Would, Starts would there. Council be willing to have the engineers look at the area and see if they can help with the drawings to determine um, what can be done and you know advise us? We will not because pay the fact that we convey the water that creates the easement. So uh, unfortunately, Parkside has a lot of underground uh, streams. I will tell you for the fact, and, and Councilman Cavabianco could tell you, I have Marist Run under my backyard. Mm -hmm. I unfortunately had to pay a landscaper to pipe it into a sump pump situation, a French drain sump pump situation, 
because I would have anywhere from two to three inches of standing water in my backyard. Uh, many areas, and that Maris Run goes uh, West Garrison Road, under Edgemont Avenue, into those inlets, and flows into the creek behind the school. Having had a DEP and EPA issue many years ago with that creek, it was actually Brookhaven's problem, not ours. So you might be running into a multiple, uh, multi-government issue here between Brookhaven Borough, Parkside Borough. Having said that, uh, it is to an extent. I believe that creek area in the back part is Brookhaven. My back, I'm in Parkside. My front door's in Parkside. Part of my backyard is Brookhaven. Yeah, the, the, vet, the veterinary, the veterinarian office, that's in Brookhaven. That's Brookhaven. Mine yeah. runs right back there. Right. So um, it's, it could be multi jurisdiction at this point. Is it, is it the case that the the Parkside, Parkside Council doesn't know who has jurisdiction. Well, it would be the case that we would have to find out where the problem starts. And then, because you have multi-jurisdictional issues, you find out where the problem starts. And where the problem starts, then you find out who has the authority to deal with that. And then you go to them. So would, would you believe, is it your contention that we should bear the responsibility to do all that? No, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying these are big we have to know if, it, if it's, if the school district and the borough and Brookhaven all come in together there, yeah. and you have to figure out who's got the ultimate liability for it. But I don't think President uh, Purcell would, would have a problem, uh, you know, if the school district if you call the school district first, you certainly, I think, you can probably say I'll that. I'll give you Brian Dante's and number. If you wait for me after here, I have his uh, number, and I'll give that to you. And I will say, as we have said to other homeowners, the council, the government tax dollars, unfortunately, will not pay for, for, the, for the professional staff to get involved. Could we give you guidance? Yes, but we will not pay for them to get involved in personal. That guidance will we accept. One okay. reason that we wanted to come here for this particular meeting is because it was it come to our attention was our understanding that there might be stormwater funds coming available, and we thought we would come here and make a request. And we understand all the issues that we have on your plate. Uh, come here and make a request to see if there is any dollars available to put towards some research or fact finding to help us with this issue. And reason being, obviously, I'm stating the obvious taxpayers. Mm -hmm. uh, we are profit property, but we have 97 units uh, uh, mm -hmm. back there that pay taxes, and uh, mm -hmm. this is this is a big issue. I agree. Uh, for us to bear, and we, we want to get it right. We, we don't have the, we don't feel like we have the uh, option to get this wrong. And, I, so and I appreciate really you coming guidance. to council. Madam, Madam you. President. And thank you. Yes, Madam, sir. I add one thing. Uh, we had a very similar issue on West Shelton yes. with uh, Mrs. Blizzard, our lady yep. of well, with Our Lady of and Charity. Our Lady of Charity. Uh, the Army Corps of Engineers came in to abate some people's issues and gave it to other people, I being one of them. <laughs> uh, so the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, DEP, the county, state of Pennsylvania, uh, we were doing a lot with the MS4 as it was radically rechanged over the last few years. Uh, the flood maps only reflect a very small portion of Parkside that's down there, which would make that more of a federal federal issue. So it's, you know, there are other avenues. And I believe, Joanne, when we spoke, I mentioned all those agencies, start hitting them. I gave you the link, I think, or the um, website for some of those. So it's a matter of research, research, research. I think we research ourselves to get in. <laughs> can, can I throw one more thing in? Is yes, and then we have to keep moving. Property, yeah, very brief. When the property was built, it was uh, the builder, uh, Pete Fayo and Kim Graves, mm -hmm. obviously entered into some arrangement with Parkside. Is there any way that we can find out what those arrangements and agreements were to, to, to build this? And once again, I'm not bringing it up to get into, to get into legal contention. What we want is help and guidance. Only, but information is mm -hmm. what we, we need. 
be. Uh, the only arrangement that the builder uh, got into with the borough was a deed of dedication for the what we call the wood lot. To the, the dedication and the deed was restricted to recreation. I have a copy. I'm familiar with that. And that was the only agreement that uh, Mr. DeFeo and uh, this borough got into, as far as I know. That's why I'm questioning the easement issues. Wouldn't he have to have some uh, some permission from the borough to, to He had build building them? permits. Uh, actually, at one point, they stopped the job because he did not have UNOs for some of the units. Sure. Um, I was unfortunately one of those persons who was removed the day I moved in. Uh, he did not have uh, some permits uh, to do further construction, which he did adhere to. And Mr. Jack Ford uh, then was involved with it, and everything had been corrected as far as I know. Because we take it, very, take it upon ourselves and take it very seriously to try to keep green trees a viable mm -hmm. community, and I think we've done a fairly good job at that. And mm -hmm. we want to keep on doing that, and we're going to use any and all help that you can provide us with that, because it's, uh, sometimes we feel like proud of our time. I, again, as the mayor suggested, I would start with Pendalco. If you can see Councilman Capobianco, he has some phone numbers. Joanne, a follow up on those links I gave you the last time we spoke. Okay. Thank All you right. for your time. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to address council on the subject specific to the American Relief Rescue Plan? Hi, I'm Ashley Roberts. I live at 118. Um, I would just like to make a really brief comment. I'm not looking for an answer about this because I understand it would take more research than what you guys are available to right now. But in speaking about the streetlight issue, I understand it's contentious, so bear with me, but I think it would be fiscally responsible to explore the program that the county has. I work a lot with multi-system issues and it's scary at first to look at large scale problems, but it almost always comes out to be more beneficial to look at it from a macro perspective. Is it possible to get numbers about what can be saved and then compare it to doing a piecemeal project? Another question I have about that is, is it possible to fit the street lights with solar so that we don't have to pay for the electricity to run them? That's another way we can save money. So just as I was listening to that conversation, those are the questions that came to my mind, and I'm hopeful that you guys can consider them. Super. Uh, let me address that very briefly. Uh, we have mentioned it uh, periodically for quite some time, that to do a test pattern of the streets, which uh, Councilman Long was nice enough to do, uh, is the best way to start this and then move forward as more money becomes available. So and as you, far as solar lights... I, dis I disagree with that. I'm, Thank you, Mr. Sidlow. We all know that. Uh, as far as uh, solar panels, it's a possibility. Uh, I've seen things like that in other areas, so it's a possibility to look into something that in the future. We have the same uh, amount of monies if we don't uh, misappropriate it this year for next year, and those are all projects that we can look into uh, having time then. So what I'm hearing is that you will have no interest at all in exploring this program. I did not say that. I said we would have time to look into those various programs. That's not what I heard, but thank you. And you know East, East Avon won't, it's not your street, we won't have that done because it's on Chester side. Yes, but uh, I do run in the neighborhood and at evening times it gets dark. So I like street lights. We do too. Does anybody else in the public have any comments? Concerning the American Rescue Relief Plan. Okay, moving on. Council, there's been several projects that have been brought up. I would like to start with the first project, and what we're going to do is to do roll call vote for individual programs. And Mrs. Higgins, thank you for bearing with me. The first project which we will vote on will be the necessity for an air conditioning unit, which is uh, two, from 2005, uh, a heating system in combination. I'm, I can only project a cost of twenty dollars to $25,000. Does this author, I, does this vote authorize spending or does it authorize investigation and then 
it has to come to council for an actual vote approving the air conditioner? Um, as I said at the beginning of my report, uh, what we will do is authorize these programs. The council member who is in charge of each program will give an update to council along with a financial report as to how we are doing with this in conjunction with Mr. Pazeni, because he's the one who has to fill out all the financial reports, the first one due August 31st. Okay. Um, I, I would like to be the person responsible for the air conditioner for passes. We are going to leave that again. I'm sorry if you did not hear me. I thought I was speaking loud enough to recommend that we leave, leave the project of the air conditioner and or uh, we also need fans in the attic, electricity for that. Uh, attic fans will increase energy use. We would leave that into the hands of our uh, efficient and competent engineer who has already brought a company in to do an assessment and talk to ERS. So that will be an engineering project. So the first program um, that I'm going to recommend that we've already spoke about is the air conditioning and heating system of which are both old for the uh, police department Again, I'm only guesstimating the cost to be twenty to twenty-five thousand, and the engineer will be handling that project. I am going to recommend that. I will ask that Mrs. Higgins do a roll call okay. vote. I'm sorry. One more question: Is that only for the air conditioner in the attic, or are all five systems? My understanding is the police department. Their air conditioner is from 2005. Their heater is from 1990s. Okay. We would need to replace any heating and air conditioning units for the police department. If the engineer feels it's appropriate, imbalance to balance fans upstairs in the attic, any insulation that may be missing, electricity to run any of these uh, fans, the whole component of the project, I can only estimate approximately 20000 And I'm going on... Uh, looking to see commercially what an air conditioner of that size, what a heater of that size would cost uh, type of thing. But that would be handled by the engineer who will continually keep us surprised of the project. So Maybe. that's only, so again, that's only for the police department. So there are five air conditioning units. You don't know which unit runs the air, con the, air the police department? Mr. Cap Cap the engineer knows what to do up there. The engineer okay. built the building. She knows what's up there. ERS has been dealing with this problem for several years. I personally don't know which unit out there has been repaired so many times that we don't have any more parts to do it. Is there a reason you want to give this to the engineer and not to me? Yes. Okay, and what is that? She built this building. She has HVAC certified personnel. She has already had a person come in and do a complete study of what we need for the police for heating and air conditioning. So there is no reason to have a lay person do this versus a professional person. I am a professional in this. Uh, I don't believe you have the qualifications of Ms. Catania. I'm sure I, that if she, if she thought that you did, I, I don't know what she I'm a professional said. in building performance, and Mrs. Katie and I have had okay, no... Okay, Mr. If you don't replace the air conditioning, does that mean that the cops are going to sweat? Yes. If you betcha. If you don't replace the heater for the police department, does that mean the cops are going to freeze? Yes. Who the hell wants a police department in Parkside where we can't even provide I'm, our police officers with the minor, with the with the minimum amount of comfort while they're out there protecting these people. That's exactly what that Councilman Sidwell, that's not, that's, we all know that me, you hate me, the police department, me, so me. I'm not going to get into that. That is completely I asked the council. Council. I have been okay. talking about since I joined this council. Mr. Sidlow, Mr. you to say that I don't care about the no, comfort of the, of the police department? All right, all right, is, is, is stop. Stop. We all understand where you're coming from. You do not have the qualifications I of our do. pristine engineer, Miss Catania. You cannot compare apples to oranges. I am moving on. The first project, which I feel is a priority, 
is our police department air conditioning heating system. It would also include any insulation in the attic, the necessities for attic fans, and the, any type of wiring that would be necessary. Mrs. Higgins, would you do a roll call vote on the priority of the first project, please? Okay, Councilwoman Guy. I support doing the air conditioner. I don't think it qualifies for this funding, but we'll find out. I'll take that as a yes. I'm sorry, Mrs. Higgins. Councilman Sidlow. Um, are we going to do the same order for all of the uh, votes, or are we going to change? Does it matter? It does matter because I have a list with all the council people listed, and I go by that. I'm not going to jump around. I vote no. Okay. Councilman Swider. Yes. Councilman Long. Yes. Councilman Capabianco. An absolute yes. Vice President Bull. Yes, and uh, I'd like to amend that to add the plumbing for the we'll bathroom that part. I mean, it's HVAC, it's plumbing. Okay. That's, I mean, you'd save the money. President Personal. Well, well. Yes. They plumb. All, all right, moving on, ladies and gentlemen. That passed. We will rank that as number one. I will, ask our, I will contact our engineer tomorrow and ask her to proceed with that. Secondly, our next I'm going to be very... Secondly, our next project is going to be the uh, bed for the truck. And this is specific to adding any lights that would be needed. Mrs. Higgins. Councilwoman Guy. This is for this the truck bed. The, the truck bed. Again, I support replacing the truck bed. I don't think that this qualifies as helping our residents who have suffered from the pandemic. So I, I don't understand. It's for economic stimulation to for the businesses in our area. Yeah, I, I, I and it's I permissible. I, all right. We'll yes see. or no? Um, you know, spend it. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't hear her. Spend. She, she, said, she said, said send it. I need a yes or a no. Yes. Thank you. Councilman Sidlow. Yes. Councilman Swiger. Yes. Councilman Long. Yes. Councilman Capabianco. Yes. Vice President Bull. Yes. President Percival. Yes. Thank you. The next project has been classified as the Woodlot Improvements. This will include, but not limited, invasive trees, dead trees, poison ivy, planting new vegetation, and also the addition of a security camera system. Mrs. Higgins, uh, uh, I'm estimating that the cost would be approximately twenty to 25000 I believe I may be high on that. I think you're going to be low. I'm going to be low? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Mrs. Higgins. Before we, before we take a vote on that, was when you first mentioned that, it also talked about increased lighting as well? Yes, that's okay. an option. Okay, I'm just mm -hmm. making sure. I personally would like to see more lights, but that's an option. So this we're, is, we're ultimately, ultimately, yeah, no, no, so we're just, ultimately just going to get sure that a, was included a in vote the, in front of council for whatever project is proposed, right? This is not authorizing the spending. This is authorizing the budgeting. One more time, Mr. Sidlow. As I stated at the beginning, we're looking at proposed projects to spend this $121,939.63 for this year. So These projects, we have all discussed this evening. The projects will be voted on as we are, and a council member will be assigned to each individual project. Once the per council member at a public meeting has gotten into the project investigating cost, vendors, et cetera, for economic development for our businesses, they will come to council and report how their progress is going within each individual project. They will also keep our treasurer informed because a separate account is set for that amount of money. We cannot use more. Anything left can be carried within minimums. But but no one's getting $20,000 to improve the woodlot when we have to agree, somebody has to write a proposal for installing cameras and then we have to approve the camera, no. the camera purchase. No, the council member in charge of the project 
will give council members an update as to how the project is going. If it is within the bid threshold, and if you would like, I can read the bid threshold. You don't need to do that again. Okay. So, so we are authorized. If we, if we come to a project that is over the bid threshold, unless it is an emergency situation, then it will be bid. That council person will say, my estimates are $25,000 for this scope of work. I need to have this bid out, at which time we will authorize a bid as if it was anything else and proceed with a bid for that specific council member's project. Just so, like, we, so we will just, be, vote, just we will like be voting again. Just like with the road projects and stuff like that. So we will be voting again. <laughs> to approve bids. To approve bids. If it is a saying. bid project, I will again say. If it's a bid project, so if it's over $21,000. So, so, uh, so, so who's in charge of, who, which, lay, which lay person is in charge of the cameras? Which non-engineer uh, is in charge of the camera, in charge of the wood lot? Mr. Sidlow. That would be me. Okay. So, er, so, Eric finds, so Eric finds a vendor for... Six thousand dollars to put up cameras. Mm -hmm. He's authorized to spend that money with this, or we, he has to come yes, to council. That's correct. And he has to come to council and has to get that six thousand approved. Mr. Uh, Sidlow. So we're so we're giving a range of twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars without without knowing specific details of. The of, council member will come to council at a public meeting and say, "This is the scope." You've never done a scope of work, apparently. I do this scope of work scope on a daily of, basis. This is the scope of work limiting. We need to remove 20 trees. We need to clean out 18 vegetation. We need to replant this. A camera system costs X amount of money. That's the scope of work the council member will come to council and say. Mm -hmm. They will be able to then say to the treasurer, do we have five thousand dollars to this vendor who has been approved an approved vendor i have given i've gotten three quotes i have i'm ready to bid this out if it's a bid project and we move forward each council member in charge of each program will prize council as to the scope of work and the financial being of that scope we but, are, but, but we're not. But we're never voting again on vendors or approving. approving. We are voting on the projects in which we want to spend one hundred and twenty-one thousand nine hundred thirty-nine dollars and sixty-three cents. So this is a budget. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Hagan. Is there something funny? Is is yeah. I, I'm not sure how I. We are voting. Is on, this a budget or is this an authorization? We are voting on projects. I have estimated, if you listen to any of my report, I, my presentation was specific. I estimated... But your, but your, your financials are not specific. They're, they're, I they're, estimated, they're one more time, I estimated the cost based on current factors. Could the lights be less than $8,000? Could they be $9,000? I am guesstimating $432 times how many lights were the streets that Mr. Long looked at. Obviously, you didn't have the opportunity or the time to look at those lights, but fortunately, Mr. Long, Councilman Long did. I was not aware. We are, you, you did not involve me in this. I asked questions. you last council meeting to take a look for t of the streets for test streets. I specifically asked you that last council meeting. Now, moving on. These are for projects. We are voting on the projects in which we are spending the American Relief Rescue Money on the projects are we okay each council member will take a project will go ahead report to council keep in touch with our treasurer and i'm out of voice so i don't know how else to explain this all right so we're giving between 20 and twenty-five thousand dollars. we're not giving specific amounts of money and we don't have a described project yet we have a described project i went through each and every described project but we don't have a scope of work from a vendor. We with, do not. Okay. And we're not voting on that scope of work by that vendor 
at we all. We don't that, have to that's, vote on the scope that's the, of work that's the by the council, council member that's, who is going to give a report on it at an open council meeting. The only issue would be if that council member says we are now at the point of a bid threshold. Okay. Mrs. Higgins, our next vote will be on the Woodlot. Did I start that? On the Woodlot project. Okay. okay. This will include, but not limited to, the removal of invasive trees, dead trees, poison ivy, planting new vegetation, security camera, and the possibility, excuse me, possibility of adding additional lights. Would you please take a roll call vote on that project? Councilwoman Guy. No. I don't think it qualifies. I don't see how it helps the people who are the most affected by the pandemic. Councilman Sidlow. I vote no as well. Councilman Swiger. Yes. Councilman Long. Yes. Councilman Capabianco. Yes. Vice President Bull. Yes. President Percival. Yes. Okay. Can Thank I you. Add? The next project that we were talking about is the street lights. Can I add one thing to the last project? Yes, sir. If we can include the turnaround for the police. Yes, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot the, that. Uh, and the other part is public parks, public lighting, security, safety, and those sort of things raise home values. It makes our community more desirable to live in. So if having a public park makes it onto Zillow, and your house is now worth $3,500 more, everyone benefits. You're absolutely correct. It's the same way as having a good elementary school. It's the same thing as having a walking neighborhood. But these are all the goals for the council. Thank you, Vice President. I appreciate that. The next project of uh, funding would be lights. We are looking at... Uh, can we do this as an either or vote? Either we do the DVRPC uh, evaluation or we do the two blocks? Yes, that's correct. The next project will be a test pattern for current street lights to convert to LEDs on West Albon, Burden Road. East Albon. I'm sorry, East. I apologize. East Albon, Burden Road, Blossom Avenue. West Chowton Road. This should and could include approximately $1,800 to switch over the lights within this building. That's the next project to be considered. Mrs. Higgins? Councilwoman Guy. No. Councilman Sidlow. Wait, so we're voting for streetlights plus the borough mm. building? Yes together those streets and let me reiterate east elbon burden blossom avenue and east shelton and how many and how and, and how much are we allocating eight thousand dollars i projected eight thousand dollars and that includes the lighting for the borough building you said that's as well. correct and you said east shelton yes yes yeah we don't want well i think we should participate <laughs> in the regional planning point. commission's program but i'll go with is that a yes yeah he said I, I think we're making the wrong choice in how we're doing this. But yes, sir, no, sir. It's a test, Mr. Sidwell. It's a test to see how the lights pictures work, how the residents like them, okay. and we can proceed in the future. And all of the and this project is mine. Mr. Sidlow, let's get through the vote before we get through that. Well, you made it clear whose project was everybody else's. I suggested it was yours. Yes, that's correct. Okay. But can we go on with the vote, please? I vote on. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mrs. Higgins. Councilman Swiger. Yes. Councilman Long. Yes. Councilman Capo Bianca. Yes. Vice President Bull. Yes. President Percival. Yes. Motion. The next project is the Mr. Powers has requested five thousand dollars to be allocated for the Board of Health Services Education Mitigation Issues Dealing with the Pandemic and Public Services. Mrs. Higgins. Councilwoman Guy. Do we know anything about that? Like anything? Yes, Mr. Powers would. Um, I don't have his memo. I apologize. Mr. Powers is in conforming with the Board of Health and Public Emergency and Economic Situations dealing with the Board of Health 
which would be uh, dealing with any health emergency consistent within the COVID-19 enhanced listing. So it would be education uh, for the public, uh, health issues, seminars for the public, anything to do and encompass uh, the Board of Health. Um, I, I guess I'd love to know more about it. I'm and sorry, Mr. It doesn't really matter which way I vote anyway. So. Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Higgins, go ahead. Yes or no? No. I'll just go now. Yes, and I I don't feel there's enough information to about it. I don't know. Um, I'm going to say no on that. <coughs> yes. Councilman Capa Bianco. Yes. Vice President Bull. Yes. Vice President Bull. President Perla. Yes. Motion no. carried. Chief Murray and uh, Mayor Demon have requested approximately ten thousand uh, dollars. I believe that might be a little high, but I'm not sure. Uh, to be allocated for our police department. There are numerous issues to be resolved, modification of the police facility to meet these accreditation uh, standards, which we all have talked about. Mrs. Higgins. Can I ask one question on that? Sure. The cameras, does that include separate from the woodlot? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Two separate projects. Okay. Just one thing. Council line guy. Again, I support the project. I don't think these funds are meant yes, to be yeah. no. So there. That's a no? Yes, that's a no. Okay, Councilman Sidlow. Yes. Councilman Swider. Yes. Councilman Long. Yes. Councilman Bianca. Yes. Vice President Bull. Yes. President Percival. Yes. I have also several projects that have been mentioned this evening, which is not on my original list. A computer and printer for the residents uh, to be used off of our Wi-Fi. What's Council's pleasure on that? Councilwoman Guy. Yes. Councilman Sidlow. Yes. Councilman Swider. Yes. Councilman Long. Mm. Yes. 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 Councilman Papa Bianco. I have a question on that. Is that it, Chief Murray? Using our broadband here. That secure what you need to do over there on your computers. The alert system. And the alert system. They want to use this. They want to use the same broadband that you're. Now you're I want. We would have to have security so that they don't have access I was in, to it, and I don't think how that's done. I know. In just speaking from my own home, I have a separate guest Wi-Fi mm -hmm. access. Uh, so like they can't like if they come in like my, when my son has friends over, I give them the guest Wi-Fi and the guest Wi-Fi password. They can't access any other computer that's on my system. They can't print from my printer. Um, so it keeps them like they get the internet access and that's it. So I'm sure I'm sure that whatever company we have providing broadband service here can easily set up a guest without much. Like, like, and this is just when the office is open? That's yeah. correct. So, yeah. Who's going to monitor this? Uh, they would have to be on their best behavior, an honor system, and bring their own age limit. Is there bring their own paper and ink. <laughs> we'll, develop, we'll develop a program in more detail. Okay. I'm sorry, Mrs. Higgins, where were you? Not the yes for me. Yes. The last program that has been mentioned is a restricted funds to the residents in which it would be a, again, a restricted fund according to the guidelines of the American uh, Rescue Plan. It would be guided for specifics only. That would be for, I should have kept that page. It would be specific to any type of relief in which the public would be adhered to through strict and stringent conformity to the law for food assistance, rent, mortgage, utility payments, legal aid to prevent eviction and homelessness. 
assistance in burials, etc. And I think we've covered everything that we can be used for. Aren't these some of these still in place by the president? COVID nineteen, you can. COVID nineteen. Yep. So we can't, you can't evict somebody, right? That's correct. And they're still getting 400 hours a week. That's correct. And food stamps and assistance. And they're not working because there's jobs lined up all over the place. Okay. Okay. Mrs. Higgins. Uh, Councilwoman Guy. Yes. Councilman Sidlow. Um, I would love to know more details, but I hear that. Can you get Ms. Wider? Yes. Councilman Long? No. Councilman Capa Bianco? No. Vice President Ball? No. Super. I'm out of projects, ladies and gentlemen. I will um, go back to... How, how much did we How much did we just allocate? Personally, I think including the inlet, $121,939. Well, well, we, we didn't vote on the inlet. No, that's we won't have to vote on that until that'll come to council uh, once we know what Del Cor is doing Thursday. Okay. And then we have to camera the line also, so that will be on our list to save money for. Well, we Vice do. President. Uh, if we do the uh, office computer yes, sir. terminal, it might be nice to put that out there. The library already has that service. Yes. But there is also things where people could make Del Cora payments. There are things like that to where we could make a guided tutorial for someone that's having. Like, I don't know if there's anybody that comes in to make a payment that you would need. But, but if somebody came in and they were like, we're having You could have a, with have a cheat this. sheet for them. Here's your checklist. Log on to this website. This is where you go to pay this bill. And then that way they're. Oh, yeah, I'm just saying that. I didn't know if yeah. somebody court costs or yeah. I didn't know if something like that ever played into what someone would need a computer access. And they won't have the access to extreme porn, which I've been accused of. By well, no, I don't know. Oh, I don't know well, anything about that. We I'm will have to restrict that. Here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, resident, can we move apparently on? Apparently, I've. Ladies and, the gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the last topic I have, I want to go through the projects that we just uh, voted on and agreed to. Our air conditioning, heating, and et cetera for the police department will be handled by our engineer. Councilman Capabianco, if you would take the pleasure of working with Ryan on our mm -hmm. truck bed and the lights that we need. Uh, our woodlot improvements, which I agree with Vice President, we need a turnaround for the police vehicles, uh, would be included. Councilman Long, if you and uh, would work on that, please, uh, with uh, in conjunction, you might want to contact Vice President uh, yes. Wolf for this because of these uh, credentials. And again, uh, Mr. Sidlow, we have just agreed on specific streets as a test pattern. Do you yeah. have those streets, and are you interested in doing that project? Yes, very much. The build, borough building and the uh, and the street lights. So, what are the streets? East. East Elbon. East Elbon, Burden. East, East Shelton. East Shelton. And Blossom. Blossom. And those are specifics. We're not looking to bring okay. in a company to do a survey. We're not looking to do Delaware Valley Regional. We're looking to contact Len Lenai Electric. They know which lights are already LEDs on those specific streets. And again, for the building, you may want to uh, talk to Councilman Capabianco. Some of our lights have been converted, so that will save some money. Can I ask uh, just two questions? You probably for open to anybody. As far as um, looking at Blossom, mm -hmm. are we looking at Blossom down, or are we looking at Blossom, Elbon, Shelton, just in that? It's just that restricted area. When I did the drive through, when I checked the park yeah. out, there, I think there are only really three lights between east from Burden, is it? Yes. All the way to Edgemont. No, Bl Blossom goes from Elbon to Avon. Right, but I'm saying I didn't do I didn't do that. Actually, there's one on the corner of East Elbon and Blossom. Okay. And then there's one up at East Chelton and Blossom. I, That's the only one. I'm just saying because when we mentioned Blossom, Blossom, it, you know, goes to right. Roland. Go, I, I, and I'm just trying to. Right. I'm just Shelton. curious. 
Yeah, yeah. Shop. Okay, he's shop. And I believe one of the streets are on Blossom. As far as doing Blossom. One of the streets on Blossom already has an LED light. And my other question is, when we look at Burden, where does Burden come from? Right? I just, I never could. And Mr. Okay. Sidlow, that's why I'm suggesting you coordinate with Lenai Electric because we have already started to replace some of those lights. And they would know to be specific as to which lights in the test area are already LEDs. So it's, it's an excellent now, I think there's two And for lights. this building, you would need to coordinate with Mr. Uh, Councilman Cavabianco because we know there's been some. And I believe, and you'll, sorry, you're from Green Tree. Green Tree. Yeah. You'll be able to. Are those lights fixed yet? That are out there? Thank you. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I meant to mention that earlier. Because they were the, that was in my report. So because the three, of the three lights, the metal I believe only lit at every second since the fact that I believe the two of them is still there. Right. One of them is still there. Okay. And, and we had a burnt switch on our camera system. I wonder if it's open to the PVC with wires. Yes. I don't know. I, I just, it just seems like it's a possibility that it might the cause of those lights coming out. Yes, that's right. They are. They underground wire issue. With Pico. Even the ones on the green tree? Yes. They're all connected. Oh, okay. All on the sidewalk. Yes, that's right. Yes. Mr. Councilman Long, would you please do me a favor and email Mr. Sidlow? with the specific streets mm -hmm. that we're going to use the test. Sure. Mrs. Uh, Higgins, would you please send Mr. Powers, who is away right now, a letter stating that his request for $5,000 for health education mitigation issues have been approved, but we need a detailed listing of what his plans are with that money. The next one is the police department, in which I will uh, ask Chief Murray and Mayor Deepman if you two would please uh, report and work on those. The sinking inlet, as I just mentioned, we are waiting for Dalcora to uh, hammer tomorrow, and then we will have to find out more information from our engineer. The other project, the computer printer for our residents, for a total cost of approximately $1,500, I would say even if 2000 is probably a good idea. Uh, Councilman Schwager, will you please handle that one? Sure. And if somebody does not want to handle a specific project, please let me know, and we will throw it to someone else. Even though Aston Library does have one, I used it when my uh, computer went down about three or four years ago before I threw it out the window. Uh, so we should also put it and make sure that everybody knows Aston Library is a great source for everyone. Uh, if it, nobody else on council has any questions or concerns about the projects or the procedure in which we will develop this, then I'll entertain a motion to go home. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you, everybody, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for bearing with us.